With the development of vision space, a new form of illusionary space based on perceptual structure, I consider that we have started to model visual awareness, in a way broadly commensurate with experiential reality. We can illustrate the data structures and processes of information exchange taking place within the phenomenon of vision. This approach to rendering developed alongside a physical theory, as I was aware from very early on that what was occurring challenged the current paradigm, fundamentally. For vision space to be a genuine reflection of the data sets involved in experiential reality, then we had to renegotiate our relationship to light. If we have some purchase for the front and back ends, what's outstanding is any excuse for the middle bit, the processing. How could neurons be achieving all of this? I'd need neuronal activity to be characterised by phase behaviours and dynamical systems over on and off binary functions. On the face of it, an all or nothing spike function is not a promising outlook. There is of course copious literature in support of exactly this phase-like interpretation to neuronal firing within computational neuroscience, and I now have an understanding of the basic elementary phase portraits emerging from the dynamical systems underpinning it. With this mechanism, I feel encouraged to make a stab at putting a story together, even if my understanding of the specifics is less than skin deep. In fact, this could turn out to be something of an advantage, as we consider linking the physical theory with the suggested retinal function through this neural mechanism to the phase space characterising experiential vision. I'll not be attempting to put any flesh on the bones. The question is rather, can flesh be put on them? Does thinking about this situation in this way simplify the problem? The suggestion articulated as part of previous vision space presentations is that the observed spontaneous firing occurring within the brain is at least in part generated by us, the biological system, independently from any externally derived activity. We're booted, operational biological systems awaiting or waiting upon the incoming. Within this spontaneous firing activity, we can find pink noise, evidence that a dynamical system is in play. Intuitive examination of the phenomenon of vision articulated as vision space suggests that this spontaneous activity establishes a field structure, akin to phase space. It's in terms of this structure that we become aware of our environment. We see the world in relation to ourselves. There is an us to consider as part of the diagnostic process involved in our presentations of vision, and also our other senses, especially audition. The proposition is that phase space, a dynamical system, forms the basis of our perceptual structure, and it supports two principal forms of attention. The first operational in central vision, tracking motion and attending to the tasks we engage in. That focused attention then works in association with another, holistically active system addressing the rest of phenomenal field as it sifts implicit contextual spatial awareness for anomalies. These modes of attention should be thought of as attractors operating within the dynamical system. As suggested in other vision space presentations, we can perhaps consider the phase space structure as being initially calibrated on a prenatal basis by the observed spontaneous firing associated with retinal waves. It would appear that the primary structure is phase-based. Externally derived incoming activity from the environment would be seen or experienced in relation to the internally generated phase-based structure, with the principal attractor acting as a locus that we know of as fixation. All this implies that the neurons dealing with the transmission of externally derived information must segment and populate the signal in terms of the phase space that the signal must then populate. So neurons feeding the system with externally derived data should also operate as dynamical systems. The interface between the delivery system and the presentation system forming a membrane. So there would appear to be little point in trying to computationally model a direct linkage from input through to expression. It's not one system that expands seamlessly to high level function it would appear that some sort of step change is involved. We would in effect be dealing with interchanges between autonomous dynamical systems, where understanding the conditions at the membranes will be absolutely crucial. Given the scenario outlined in vision space, 
that decoherence is occurring at the retina as the source of two independent data potentials to be streamed through the two visual pathways, there would be at least two independent mechanisms operating at the interface with the self-generating perceptual structure they are to populate. In short, there is a reason why there is so much phase-based activity going on in the brain. It's because light requires it of us. We're fired up by it. Our processes are defined by it. As I've suggested, we need to look long and hard at the retinal glial cells and their relationship with rods at photopic levels. Ultimately, the data potentials decohered at the retina, separately provisioning implicit and explicit takes on reality to be subsequently mediated within the internally generated phase space to form the basis of our phenomenological relationship with the real. We can perhaps speculate that the data potential from which explicit awareness is generated is characterized by the integrating profile with the implicit, the resonating profile. It's not going to be quite that simple of course, but we need to start to feel our way towards recognizing the inherent duality within signal propagation. Vision space indicates that the retina decoheres the data potential through both passive absorption dominated by the Muller glial cells and then by intensity detection through the familiar rods and cones at the back of the membrane. As we know, the two visual pathways are characterized as a dorsal where and a ventral what, and we suggest this involves a low frequency phase based spatial impression of the scene being unfolded within the self generating phase space structure together with the restricted area of high-frequency detailed information derived from the intensity measurements within macular vision, each being encoded separately, exploiting the functional possibilities inherent within each processing system. It would be the low-frequency spatial impression that forms the main interface, populating the generated phase space and forming the extensive phenomenal field, implicit spatial awareness being ground zero if you like. The high frequency detailed impressions being modulated as required centrally around the fixation attractor but requiring a very significant processing capability to compose and maintain. Our explicit form of awareness is computationally heavy. This in turn indicates that implicit spatial awareness presents subconsciously but that central vision is considered Awareness of form being contemplated, requiring conscious attention. The interface between the biologically generated and the incoming captured would locate within what computational neuroscience identifies as mesoscopic neuronal group activity, the mechanism by which the various forms of transference between systems occurs. A situation where the larger scale rhythmic oscillations that result need not match the firing patterns of the individual neurons from which they derive. The implicit spatial impression resonating with and presenting within the biologically generated phase space, with the small area of detail being controlled and modulated within this. Temporal alignment between all of this activity being approximate, not absolute. The same sort of procedure would occur for audition. By the time the auditory signal has been segmented, it's in the same form as the visual signal. It too presenting within phase space, exhibiting contextual implicit and objective focus explicit characteristics. It would indicate that it's through the biologically generated phase space and the system that feeds into it that multisense integration is achieved. To understand all of this, we have to acknowledge our participatory role as biological systems and through that understand what's actually involved in an act of observation. We can't be taken out of the measurement process. Third party observation is an abstraction from reality. Records taken under this ontology, however accurate, are not real in that they tell us at best only part of the story. They may well support theories derived from the third party perspective, but that doesn't make either more real. Maintaining the third party position just confirms the Hall of Mirrors scenario that's been constructed for us and by us, but it's distancing us from the reality that we all form as conscious biological systems. The paradox being not that we encounter paradox under these circumstances, 
but that there is actually nothing more obvious than this discrepancy, and yet we choose to accept the paradox rather than confront the ontology that gives rise to it. Just look at your TV and then the room around you, preferably in the daylight. What a huge gulf exists between them.